Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. How are you doing, John? We just came off a great weekend. We had our men's conference, uh, we had Sunday services, and looking forward to our Wednesday night services. And, and it's just amazing to see the work of the Spirit here at work at our church. And, and there's just amazing things going on from all the different ministries. And so we're coming off a great weekend and we have many more weekends to come. But you know, thinking of that, Pastor, I started thinking about the Jesus movement. And, uh, and I wanted to ask you, you know, because something was posted recently on social media and people were beginning to identify themselves with the Jesus move movement because they were around during that time. And, and, you know, there's been little bits of pockets of revival and different things coming on. Is there a new Jesus movement going on? Well, that's an interesting way to put it. It's in interesting that somebody would identify with the movement because they were alive when that movement occurred. There were, there were things related to that that I think that would actually... Um, be markers of something that um, God was doing that had become unique. So if somebody got saved, we'll say at uh, a Baptist church or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever fellowship it may be, you know, and it was during the era of what was called the Jesus movement, then that's simply revealing the fact that God's Holy Spirit was moving everywhere, which is what the Jesus movement actually is. You know, my own Pastor Chuck had said that um, Jesus never stopped moving. <laughs> and so it, that's a fact. And so, you know, on, the, on one hand, there was a special thing that occurred. Some are now calling it the Jesus Revolution. Mm. But the way I have always looked at it is it was a Jesus movement. It was a revolution. Um, there was Jesus people, there were Jesus freaks, Jesus music. It was all about Jesus. And so from that perspective, the Jesus movement has never stopped. Whether somebody got saved in a Baptist church or a Methodist church or whatever fellowship in AG, Jesus was moving. But on the other hand, um, I, I, as an example, I was part of... Uh, the hippie kind of um, culture that was that was what I identified with and would have considered myself and still to this day would consider myself that. So I was a, a hippie kind of kid. Um, but if I, as a hippie kid, said that I, you know, I identify with Woodstock <laughs> because they played music that I liked, uh, I probably would be um, kind of exaggerating. I could say I liked the different groups. Almost every one of the groups that I'm familiar with who played at Woodstock were, were groups that I, I listened to, you know, the Santana and, and uh, you name it. Um, Jan, the, the, you, you just name it, you know, Jimi Hendrix and all. Those are, those are people of my era that I liked. But I could never say I was part of the Woodstock experience outside of saying... I liked the music that was played at Woodstock, which was in general from the East Coast to West Coast and everything in between. So if somebody is identifying themselves as a person in the Jesus movement because they got saved during that time, I'd say, well, there's some truth to that. Obviously, the Spirit of God was moving and that person was, uh, was saved in that time. And so there was a move of the Spirit. And obviously, as a believer in Christ, you were part of that movement. But if you're specifying a certain experience of some sort, then if you, if you weren't there, you know, if you weren't at one of the churches that were springing up at that time that were products of, you know, the Spirit's movement, like Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, you may be stretching it a bit. Mm. Now, does that, why would, and it's <clears throat> not answering why, why is it in, which on your, in your feedback, why would people find that important to identify themselves as I was a part of it because therefore I was born again in it? Or I, I find that interesting, John. I think maybe it's because we're we're living in a time when, if somebody's on the stage doing some music, there's going to be several people on the floor who are singing along with the musician. Mm -hmm. I think they just like to be part of something, and so they're identifying 
with something bigger than themselves. I, I think that there's, uh, an, I understand that, you know, I want to be known as something who is part of that. Why? Because that's something popular right now and I want to be popular along with that. Right. I just think <clears throat> it's an over-identification and, and it's just something we have to be aware of, you know. Um, I, I just think we have to be careful not to over-identify with, with a, uh, 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 you know, like I at a Calvary Chapel, I was a Calvary Chapel or this or that. And so I, I have my preferences. I'm trying to find a way to say what I'm thinking. Um, you know, I got saved. I was a hippie. I went to Calvary Chapel. Um, that's where I got my, my foundations. And everything that became my ministry came out of that. Um, so I can say that. But others, you know, were not part of that. And and yet the Holy Spirit was moving in their life too, and so I just think that's that's beautiful, you know, and I, I think that's great. But if somebody's saying, "Yeah, I saw the Jesus Revolution," and though I lived in in Iowa at the time, I was a Jesus freak. Well, maybe you were, maybe you weren't. Weren't I? Don't know. I don't know why that would be important to you. What really matters is you got saved, Amen. you know, and that's the, at the end of the day, that's really that matters. That's important. Is can that be considered a bandwagon mentality? Yeah, I would. I would. I have a normal uh, a way of looking at it, saying, "Yeah, let's let's ride the wave of what was popular, and let's be popular too." I I, I feel sorry for for um, for someone who who has that kind of need. I really do. I don't see the need, you know, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and uh, right. isn't that all that matters? Right. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Absolutely, and so the Jesus movement has been going since Jesus walked the face of the earth, Amen. since he birthed the church by the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. He never stopped moving, and so, but let's not pretend, you know, I I didn't go to Woodstock, and I'm not going to pretend that I did, and I could watch the movie 15 times and <laughs> speak about all the lines in it, and oh, I remember when the rain and the mud, and this and that, that's because you see that kind of thing in, in a film. But then when you speak to somebody who, who says, yeah, do you remember sliding down the hill on those, uh, you know, on that cardboard or whatever, you know, and, and uh, well, I wasn't really there. I just saw those things in film. It kind of makes you into what, well, was called a poser, yeah. you know, and we, we don't need to be that. We're in Christ and that's, that's all that matters. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you for sharing because I, my hope is that people don't over-identify themselves with something that they weren't truly a part of it and think, thinking that's their identity in Christ when exactly. it's no movement, it's Jesus Christ himself. It's always Jesus, John, and, and uh, we just happen to have a tradition that came out of, of something that has been referred to as the movement. But Amen. they were great works of God before, and I pray that God does new, fresh things in the future. Amen. You know, and so let's be part of the movement of Jesus Period. Amen. Well, Pastor David, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you guys for tuning in. We do have services tomorrow, uh, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And Pastor, you're taking us through Romans chapter 7. Chapter 7. And we look forward to having that. That's been a, a, a good study and a great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Then we have our services on uh, Saturday, uh, excuse me, Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45. Look forward to having you guys come and join us. Registration for Israel, the link is up now at our website. You can go there and register for our 2024 trip. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it already. It's going to be fun. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Pastor, thank you again so of much. Course. God bless you guys. We love you.